Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church, and it's a beautiful Wednesday morning, and it is time for our daily devotion. I want to invite you to come and join me, if you would please, and spend a few moments with me as we pray, read scripture, the devotion for today, and take some moments to reflect upon it as well. I'm going to give folks a moment to say hello and leave comments and uh, would encourage you to do that as you join our Facebook event. If you're someone who watches this a little bit later on today, don't forget to leave a comment as well. Let me know you, we are here. We would appreciate you doing that. Hello, Barbara. Good morning to you. I'm going to say hello to folks as they um, join our Facebook event. What a beautiful morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Morning, Mr. Dunbar. Push a button on my phone. Hello, Marilyn. Good morning to you. Hoping you and Jamie are doing much better. Hi, Chris. Good morning to you and Barb. Glad both of you are here. Hi, Susan. Good morning to you. Almost there. Guess we won't see you guys tonight. We're going to be reading out of the Gospel of John, chapter 13. The Gospel of John, chapter 13. Give it just a couple more seconds. Give folks an opportunity to say hello. Again, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. We'll probably have some other folks that will join us while we're in the middle of our devotion time. All right, so here is our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17 says, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. 
Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table and said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Our devotion writer today is Janice, yes, Janice Gregg Presley from Maryland. And her focus verse is verse number 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Here's her devotion. I can vividly imagine the foot washing scene in the Gospel of John. Jesus taking off his outer garment, wrapping a towel around his waist, kneeling to remove the sandals, the disciples' sandals, and then washing and drying one dusty foot after another. My eyes well up at the image. If the Savior of the world was willing to take on such a humble task, we should all be willing to serve others too, regardless of who we are and who they are. Following Jesus' example of servant leadership means being willing to engage with those around us, no matter their background. Because of Jesus' love for us, we can show love to everyone, no matter our similarities or our differences. So let us strive to show others a love that says, we are more alike than we are different. A love that respects everyone's right to have differing opinions. A love that asks, how can I help you? A love that acknowledges our own weaknesses and shortcomings. A love that focuses on Jesus. So the thought for the day is Jesus calls me to look beyond earthly divisions and to love all people. So I've been reading a little bit uh, about different things in the Gospels as I'm preparing for our stewardship series. And one of the stories that I read recently was the story of Zacchaeus. We all know that from the, the rhyme from Sunday school, Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. He ran forth to see the Lord and climbed up in a sycamore tree, right? You know, that kind of, that rhyme that goes along with that. And we've got this image in our head of this Zacchaeus character. It says in the commentary that when Jesus says, Zacchaeus, I am coming to your house today to dine with you, that it would have been custom that the moment that Jesus came into the home, a servant of Zacchaeus would have taken Jesus' sandals and washed his feet. That was part of the custom of greeting. Zacchaeus would have greeted Jesus with kisses, probably on the cheek, um, as you see in most Middle Eastern countries, would have him would have had him had had a servant wash his feet and then would have given him a prominent place at the table to be able to sit and eat. You think about the woman who came to Jesus with perfume and and she washed the feet of Jesus with this perfume and then dried it with her hair. She took her hair to dry off Jesus' feet. Right? Jesus is accustomed to these moments where people give him position and power and deference and honor and all those things. But Jesus didn't just reside right there. He didn't live into this notoriety that he had and the power and the privilege that came along with being this great teacher and healer who proclaimed to be the Son of Man and the Son of God. Rather, Jesus also took the moments to be a servant. 
to strip himself of his power and his privilege and all of these royal titles, son of David, son of man, son of God, he stripped himself of all of these and served. And it was literally in this moment taking the form of a true servant who washed the feet of people. That's probably one of the lowest tasks that a servant could do was to wash someone's feet. And Jesus did that. He wanted his disciples to know that he wasn't any different than anybody else, any better or any worse off. He was there to be just one of them. And because of that, we should see each other in that same kind of equanimity. We should see each other equally. We should try to figure out how to get past all of these barriers and these divisions that we put up for ourselves. There's a good reason why I don't talk about politics uh, on the internet or usually around other people. And that's because in our society today, uh, politics is way too divisive. And it, it is a way in which we try to figure out who is us and who is them. And we divide ourselves around these issues. We have no space in our conversation today for differences of opinion. It is either you agree with me or you disagree with me. And you are either here or there. You're either on the right side of this issue or you are whatever demonizing term you want to use, right? We've got all of these kinds of things. And so that's one of the reasons why I don't put these things on the internet. Unfortunately, um, I do see Christians that are on there people who are Christ followers, and they find themselves in discussions that are divisive around a lot of these topics. And I think about the witness that God calls us to have. Jesus calls us to look beyond earthly divisions and to love one another. And I think it's pretty difficult for us to love people beyond the community if we're not real good at loving people inside of our own community. So maybe it starts there. How do we love one another inside the community despite our differences? How do we make allowances for these things that we can let separate us? And how can we find more commonality? Uh, God has done this through Christ has brought us all together and made us one in Christ Jesus. The, what, that which God has brought together, we ought to try to figure out how not to tear apart. And so as a community, I want to encourage us to think about what it means to be people who see ourselves as servants of one another, willing to go, do whatever it takes, and to set aside any of these other things only to see someone as a child of God and in need and in their time of need to be there to help. So how do we love one another? How do we love in the way that Jesus loves? How do we cast aside all these earthly divisions so that we can simply love one another? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. And so, O oh gracious God, we ask that you help us to remember your sacrifice that was for us. Guide us to spread the love and the joy of Christ to all that we meet. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, great friends. Thanks for being here today. I appreciate seeing all of you. So I'm going to be at um, Church of the Resurrection tomorrow and Friday for their Leadership Institute. Uh, based upon the schedule, I'll probably try to sneak out into the parking lot to my car and do the devotion from my car. So, But it might not be right on time just to let you know. So you might want to just kind of fish around and see if I'm on the internet around noon or so uh, on Facebook and doing the devotion around that time. But We'll get it done tomorrow and Friday. Just may not be at the time that we normally would do it, but... We'll have a devotion each of those days and then again on Saturday as well. I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your beautiful Wednesday. And I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. 
Don't forget again, if you're someone who watches this later, leave a quick comment. And if you would like to, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page as well. God's grace and peace be upon you, friends. Look forward to being with you tomorrow.